Hello and welcome back to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today I got in an Orion 5 channel class AB amplifier uh, that the power supply transistors were heating up uh, regardless of the transistors used. Um, and also after do believe replacing all the drive uh, pre-drivers for the power supply so I was working on this amp um, I wasn't going to make a video on this because I don't know exactly which Orion board this is uh, but I thought I would go ahead and shoot a quick video on this board because uh, this kind of gives a general rundown of power supply issues because this power supply has a pretty typical setup for most power supplies so i'm just going to show you real quick how this is set up so we have a, a tl494 driver board here for the power supply and what they're doing is they're going through a set of transistors and diodes uh, for the power supply drive which that is no big deal um that's it's common either going to have a your npn or pnp uh, pre-drivers or you're going to have uh, diodes so you're either going to have one or the other uh, so this board just happens to use the the diodes for the uh, power supply drivers uh, for the power supply drive so what i did is uh, i went through and I checked everything uh, I got the scope hooked up to both sides of the transformer each bank they're all each bank is in parallel so this is one parallel set and this is another parallel set so you have one side two sides uh, we can call this uh, the red side and you can call this the gold side just by looking at the transformer windings here so what I did is I made sure that the control voltage, I had this red wire disconnected at first uh, for the control voltage. Uh, the rectifiers are out of the board and I was checking the drive. It was building a good square wave, more or less, uh, for the rectifiers. And then of course the, uh, the power supply would shut off. And this bank here would heat up just as the uh, the complaint was demonstrated when it came in that the one that the power supply bank would heat up. So I checked the snubber network. You have a uh, an RC snubber for the primary side and you have an RC snubber for the secondary side. So that you have a resistor capacitor snubber. So that's what you call an RC snubber. So I checked the snubbers. Now the snubbers are good. There's uh, no open resistors, no shorted capacitors. So the snubbers are good. So then, uh, then what I did is I was checking all that with the power supply transistors out. It had a perfect square wave for both banks with the transistors out. It was just a flawless square wave. So then I loaded each bank with some test IRFZ 44s. I have thousands of these, so I used IRFZ 44s to test with. These are 22 ohm gate resistors, uh, so I know these 44s they are robust. And using a pretty harsh pull down resistor is not going to hurt these. So uh, what I did is I I fired this up and then found the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the upper left hand corner there of your screen is the scope. You'll see, you'll see why this is heating up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fire up the board. And we're just going to do a quick capture of the uh, power supply drive here. So I'm just going to fire up the drive. And I'm just going to hit the run stop on the scope. And let me, let me zoom out just a little bit here for you. So there is your problem. So the blue 
channel, which is channel two, this bank here, the bank that had the complaint, uh, the complaint of heating up is verified by the scope. If you're to see that blue trace is what I would call positive while the yellow trace is going positive. Well, that uh, will create a, uh, a short. You can't have transistors on at the same time in a power supply. It will, it will ultimately fail. Uh, typically, they fail pretty tragic, too. So what I will do is I will follow this trace going back to the diode and resistor that is controlling that bank. And I'm going to bet that we're going to find a transistor. It's looking like it's not pulling down all the way. So it looks like we're going to be, uh, it looks like we have a, a resistor either out of tolerance or a diode, or it could be one of the, uh, it does look like they're using a transistor in front of the diode first. So with those, uh, by seeing those traces there, I'm going to remove the drive card and replace the uh, transistors that are driving that side there and see if we can clear up that channel two trace so it's not coming on at the same time and that should resolve this problem. I will be right back with you. Uh, please stay tuned. All right, I'm back with you guys uh, about this drive card. So I don't know if this was a, I don't want to call it a defect or, or an error on this card. I mean, if this was an error, then this card would have never worked properly. And I'll explain why here in just a second. But I was expecting to find like a bad transistor, um, a bad diode, uh, something that was just preventing the transistor from getting pulled back down to ground fast enough. So let me uh, let me just try to help explain what I found here. So what we have here is you have the you have the the TL four nine four. Its outputs are on pins nine and ten, so which come down and they go across uh, each one of these. Uh, A1277s and diodes. So the 494, um, how can you say it, triggers the 1277. Uh, the 1277s, the collector um, goes back to, I do believe, a 12 volt pin. And then, of course, the emitter goes out to uh, these two pins here. This last pin here is the one we had a bad drive on. So if you follow this last pin, this last pin comes up to this top A1277. So this one was working fine. It, the signal looked good. This one's not. But when I flipped the card over and started looking at the traces of this card, that this A1277, the one that was not getting pulled down properly, its collector was going nowhere. It has a via here. It was soldered in place. Uh, this transistor, the collector is soldered to this big back plane here. This big uh, back plane goes to this pin here, which is a 12 volt pin. I had no connection between these two collectors. None. And uh, there's a trick where you can shine a flashlight through a board. I don't know if I can do this here on camera without blinding you guys. You can see where all the traces go on a card. So as I was shining that flashlight through there, I 
could not see a single trace coming out of the collector of this A1277, which is odd. You have to have collector voltage there for it to work properly. So what I did is I soldered in a jumper. Um, I worked on a car card previously uh, last year that was kind of sim similar to this. And on the card itself, they had actually taken the two legs and bent them over each other and soldered them together. I'm thinking this might have been the same situation where the two legs needed to be bent over to complete the collector between the two transistors. I mean, this is a complete assumption. Uh, when I get these boards in, uh, I know nothing about its history. I know nothing of what happened to it, where it came from. Uh, so I have to go solely on troubleshooting the, the problem itself. Um, so what I did is I put that jumper in. So what I'm going to do, sorry for any background noise, they're trimming a tree outside somewhere on the block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place the card back in and it's a uh, vias there I'm gonna put some pressure on I'm gonna pull back on it here and if you watch your screen in the upper left hand corner you're gonna see something very interesting and remember all I did was put the jumper in between the two collectors of those a 1277s so now I'm going to power up the amplifier and there is your drive. Let me just capture that screen there for you. Let me turn the power back off so I don't short any transistors out. The bank of transistors uh, that came in the original complaint of overheating is not at all getting warm. They're stone cold. Uh, both sides, stone cold, stone cold. So, which you can obviously see uh, based on that drive that they're not turning on at the same time anymore, that that transistor is now properly getting pulled back down the way it should. All by placing uh, that jumper across the collectors. Uh, which makes sense uh, because you have your pull down. You have your you have your pull down resistors which are on the board uh, over here next to each bank. So you have your pull downs here, you have your gate resistors, so this end of the circuit is fine. Another odd thing about this card is uh, these two resistors here. Now on other cards in the past that I've worked on, those two resistors are used to pull the signal back down on the TL494. But again, if you take that flashlight and shine through this board, these two ends of these resistors go absolutely nowhere. So, again, uh, just another odd thing about this card is the pull down resistors that are located on the card do not go to ground which you don't need to because you have pull down resistors on the board it kind of makes me question did this card originally come with this board it may have it may have been just something that the factory uh, you know, bought these in bulk um, and they already were had the pull downs installed. But I'm surprised that there's no traces anywhere from the factory that to pull these back to ground. So uh, not to make this too long and long winded. Uh, so uh, that's what I did. I put that jumper in be between the uh, collectors there. And as you can see on the screen there, we now have drive. Uh, of the uh, RFZ44s.